Hi, everybody. Welcome. I'm Kathy, the watercolor artist. Very grateful to have you on board. Thank you for coming today. And today we're going to do some Christmas cards or holiday cards, whatever you want to call them. Um, but before we get into that, let's just take three deep breaths and we'll just focus on something in the room that gives you joy or something that uh, makes you smile, something makes you happy. And as you take your deep breath in, when you release, then just hold for a second at the top. And when you release, just really drop those shoulders down as far as you can. Just we'll just open up some space in here. We tend to get a little bit tight in here. There's tension we hold. So, so just for this hour, if you could work just to release that would be helpful for you and for your project. So let's take our first deep breath in and hold it for a moment. Give yourself a smile and release. Really drop that down. Second deep breath in and hold it and release. And a third deep breath in and hold it, give yourself a smile, lots to do in a second, and release. And as I said, we hold some tension here, so just release, so just give yourself a little massage, and we'll get right into art. So welcome again, thank you for coming, and please remember that this is not a project about perfection. This is a project about trying something new, having some fun, working with like-minded artists as yourself and just exploring what where your talents lie. So I have two cards. I've folded the paper in half. That's a six by nine folded in half. And I'm going to put a little piece of tape on the back of my card and I'm going to push it together just to hold it firmly on the canvas so it doesn't pop open. And I'll do the same with the second card. Put a little piece of tape in there. I'm just going to push it on to the back just while I paint. And there we go. And so we'll start with our first color. I'm just going to tip my camera a little bit. There we go. So the first, uh, firstly, I'm going to use just clear water on my joy card. So I want just clear water. Just moving my water dish here. So I want clear water all the way around. I want the whole card, but not the little bird. So I'm going to paint around the little bird and I'm going to leave the beak white. So I'm just going to go around that beak, but I don't want a halo around the bird. So I'm going to go right to the penciled edge and just paint all of that in clear water. I'm going to go around, around the back over that circle in the center, that little line, that line for O, and I can go over those feet and over the letters. So we're going to paint on top of the letters anyways. So it's okay if they get wet, but we're going all the way around the bottom of that bird, leaving the beak white, coming around the back, underneath the bird and just getting the whole rest of the canvas wet. So what we're doing is priming our canvas to accept paint. And if you've got water on your bird, you can go ahead and just tap that off with paper towel. And remember, this is not about perfection. So if you do get some on your, your center, that's okay. We are going to put a darker color over top anyways, but leave that little beak at the front white. And I have a little bit of pooling of water, so I'm just gonna to touch my paper towel just to pick up the excess water. So the color that I'm going to use for this, and I'm using a number six brush. If you have a, a larger brush or a flat brush, a flat brush uh, with this shape would work as well, would work very good, very well. 
So I'm just going to start on an angle, putting my cobalt blue paint. And I'm just going on an angle. You can do your side to side if you like, but I'm just going on an angle, just giving a little bit of, of I don't know, a little bit of detail in the background. Just, just looks like a nice background. I'm coming right to the back of the bird. Right under the beak. And because I put that water on, the paint will thin a little bit. I've primed my canvas to accept that paint. And I'm just going to continue with my cobalt blue. Just putting that over the whole canvas. I mean, just not having a halo around that bird, just coming right to the line. And if you find that you're a little bit stressed about, oh, you don't want to hit the bird and oh, you want to make sure you get all the way around and oh, you want it to be perfect and you're finding that you're holding your breath while you're painting, take a deep breath and just let it go. And you'll find that the paint will just move the way it's supposed to move. It will just flow a little bit different and you won't be quite as concerned. We're just popping paint on there, just for a backdrop. So as I said, if you wanted to go from side to side instead of from corner to corner, you could do that as well. But I just wanted a nice designer look backdrop. And you can see I've got lights and darks, lows and highs in my different colors of blue. It doesn't have to be perfect and all blended and exact. And I can see some of you are still painting. So we'll just wait a moment. And you can get your next color ready if you like. So the next color we're going to use for our second picture is hooker's green. So you'll want two different colors of green. If you don't have two different colors of green, you can mix the same green with an ochre. So I'll be using hooker's green and sap green. So I'm starting at the bottom of my tree on the second card with hooker's green. And I'm going to paint the bottom oval on my tree. So it doesn't have to be completely straight. It doesn't have to be completely even in color. And then I'm going to miss a row. So above that, I have a row. I'm going to miss that row and go up one. So I'm leaving that center spot white. And I'm doing the same color, the hooker's green.
And I'm going to continue up my tree, missing a row. And doing the next section green. And if it's lighter or darker in spots, that's okay. If I feel I want to touch on any of the ones I've already done, I can. And I'm going to continue right up the tree. I'm missing a row. I'm leaving a white spot. Missing a row. They're getting a little bit smaller. And I'm missing a row. And I'm doing the next. So this is your tree and your joy card. If it looks different than somebody else that you're with or a neighbor, or you think it looks different than other people's, that's okay. Individuality is very well accepted and most welcome. So I'm switching to a smaller brush because my star at the top is smaller. I'm switching from my number six brush to a number three pointed brush. And I'm doing wet on dry, which is what we did with the tree. So wet on dry, so wet paint on a dry canvas. I'm not wetting the star first. I'm using ochre paint with my smaller brush. And I'm just going to paint my star, just painting inside my lines or actually right on top of my lines, just with ochre. And it's fairly dark ochre, so I'm not watering it down. More paint, less water. And if your star isn't completely perfect, that's okay too. This is not to be, un unless you really, really want it to be perfect, it's okay that all of your angles might not be exact unless you had a, a form that you used. And so you won't have your star joined to your tree yet. And you'll have all your, your little white lines in between all the way up to the top. We've got North Carolina and Colorado. Oh, welcome. That's a far ways from, from where I'm at. Some of us are in Canada. Some of us are in UK. <laughs> Thanks, Cheryl. All right. So let's, let's move backwards to the other, uh, our other picture. And I'm going to work with a color called Brilliant Red. It's just red. It doesn't have to be, if you don't have a specific red, if you have cadmium red, we're just working with a little bit of red and we're going to do the bird's tummy. So we're just doing that little tummy section. So the other red we're going to use, it's more of a, it's a lizard crimson. That's what we're going to paint the bird with, but the little belly we want to sit and look a little bit different. So it's a lighter color.
Now I'm still giving a little bit of extra time for your backdrop around your bird to dry. So we've only done the little stomach part in that br uh, brilliant red or cadmium red, whichever you've used. And we'll go into black, still using my small brush. My number three is fairly small. And I'm going to paint the eye of the bird, but I'm going to leave a little section just a little section in the eye, just leave a little spot white. So if I put that close, you'll see there's just a little spot that I've left that's white. But all around that is black. So I'm just going to go back, it turned a little bit gray, so I'm just gonna go back around just with fresh black, just pop, pop that on, but just still leaving that little spot white for the bird. So just as a recap at this point, we have cards. I've just put a little piece of tape in between just to hold that firm, just tape that down. We've done the background on an angle using cobalt blue. And then we left this card alone and moved to the second card. So the second card, we've only done every other section of the tree in hooker's green and we've done the star in ochre and then we moved back to the little bird and just did the tummy in a red either brilliant red or cadmium red and the black eye leaving a little tiny white spot in that eye So if anyone still has a, a light or a wet background on their blue um, joy or bird card, we're going to move back to the other tree. And this time I'm going to use sap green or a lighter green from the hooker's green. So if you don't have both hooker's green and sap green, you can make a green that's a little bit on the olivey color just by adding a little bit of ochre to a darker green. But I'm using sap green, so my sap green is going to look different than the other green. So I'm doing the white spaces in between in sap green. You can see it's just a little bit different green. And again, I'm going to do every other one all the way up to the top.
this and I've just hit on that darker color up above. So I'm just going to use my brush and lighten that up a little bit. Just do some lifting off. As it is the lighter green that I want underneath. We'll chat about who's coming from where. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. I'm so glad you're here. So I'm moving away from my tree. I'm just going to let it dry in between those layers. If there's running in between, not to stress on that, that's okay. Again, if you're doing this and you're finding, oh, you know, you're tricky in between layers and things and you're, you're, tightening up your shoulders. Just take a deep breath and let it go and drop your shoulders down. It's all gonna be okay. And I'm going to move back to the bird. I'm actually going to work with the letters, my J-O-Y. So I'm using alizarin crimson. And I'm just going to paint that letter J, starting at the top, just coming down and around and back up again. So if you don't have a lizard in crimson, you have a dark, a, a deeper red than what's on the belly of your little bird. That would be good to use that. If you don't have that, you can add a little bit of purple to your red and that would give you a deeper color. I'm going into the letter Y. And I'm going to paint what I can see of the O in the center around the bird.
And believe it or not, we're almost at half time. So I'm going to read our card. It says, my productivity stems from inspiration. This is for all of us. When I focus on what brings joy, my tasks become effortless actions. So my productivity stems from inspiration. When I focus on what brings me joy, my tasks become effortless actions. So thank you to Nancy for drawing that card for us. Nancy with her new puppy, Cashew. <laughs> It'll give you lots of joy over the season, maybe. <laughs> So keep you busy anyways. All right, so let's move from that card back to, <laughs> all right, thank you. And back to the, the Christmas tree. Now the Christmas tree, if I start, oh, I guess if I start at the bottom, I'm working with alizarin crimson, my nice deep red. And in between each layer, I want to do a line or a row of red. So I'm just doing a row of red in between each layer. And it doesn't have to be perfectly straight. If there's white spots in between and you want to cover them up, that's a good opportunity to do that. It will almost look like icing on a cake. So we'll work our way all the way up to the top of the tree, so in between each layer of light green and dark green. And we'll come back to the little bird on the other side. And the little bird on the other side is alizarin crimson. And we'll paint around that heart wing. So just paint around the outside of that heart. And we're going to leave the beak white. So I'm just putting a, a swipe down in front of that beak so I don't hit that beak when I'm painting. And I'm painting around the outside of the tummy.
and I'm coming from the corner, the, the point of the tail down around to join. I'm just following the line that I've drawn. And I'll do the same on the top. And I'll bring that around the line that I've drawn right up over the head just to join the front base of the bird. Just rounding that out. And then because I've marked that heart wing, I can paint around that with the alizarin crimson and it should stay white because I've identified where that is to stay white. So when we fill that in, in good deep color. Just around that eye very carefully. You know, if I tried to put the feet on my bird, those, those feet will be black. But if I try to put those feet on my bird now, that red color will probably run. So I'm going to let it dry. So in order to let that dry and still be busy on my project doing something, I'm with still a lizard crimson on my brush. I'm going to make the holder for my star is coming down to the tree. And this is your tree. So if you want to decorate your tree in different colors, in something fun, um, just for example, I can take some of this alizarin crimson and I can put some little, just little lights or little marks they look like little lights on my tree they don't all have to be the same color but that's the color i just happen to have on my brush if you want to use different colors and you can put even numbers odd numbers but i'll just decorate a little bit of that tree almost looks like a big cookie So I'm just touching my brush, just making a little rounded motion. There's lots of different variations that you could do with that if you wanted to. You could put some little outer stars. Or if I use ochre, just for example, if I use ochre, and I decide just to put a few little stars on the outside around, just around the outside of my tree. Just for effect, or if you wanted to put a set of Christmas lights on there with some wires like we did last week.
can put some little dots in and around. So you have free artistic license to do whatever you like to make this your own and make it fun. Just remember, just breathe, take a deep breath. And I'm going to clean my brush off, just having a damp brush. And I'm going to lift off a little bit of paint in the belly of the bird, just a little bit lighter, just a little spot, just a little, just a little light source for our bird. And I think I'll do a little light spot, a little light spot just at the top of the head, just a little bit, just lightening up just at the top of the head. So I'm just lifting off a little bit of paint. And if you want to make that beak ochre, that would be pretty too. That's up to you. If you want to paint that little heart the same color as the beak or a different color, this is your project. So feel free to use your own creativity and your own imagination. And now I'm going into black with my small brush. I'm going to paint those two little legs. One leg is behind the bird so you can only see from the bottom of the bird down you can't see the whole leg it's behind the bird and the second leg is in front of the bird so it's going to sit on top of the bird so you'll be able to see that part of the leg so one is behind and one is in front. And I do think while I have my paintbrush out and my ochre is still a little bit wet, I am going to paint that beak ochre. So I think I'd like to do that. Okay. 
And it's up to you if you want to leave yours white or you want to paint it, you can see what it looks like with paint on it. And as watercolor dries 20 to 30% lighter than when we put it on, my letters have gone fairly light. And so I'm going to repaint them with my alizarin crimson. So I'm just going to touch them up again, just to make them a little bit darker. And I might make them a little wider. And we're done a little bit early if you haven't decided yet what your artist signature looks like then now's the time to decide time to sign your art so wherever you decide to sign your art but even if you're going to give it a, as a card you could sign your name on the back if you like or you could sign your name on the front but it is your art so you give yourself credit for taking the time to do this project. But this will give you an idea for further cards. There's lots and lots of different ideas to be done. There's different kinds of trees that you can paint. Um, we could have put, um, if, I, if I go ahead and I put some Christmas lights on my tree, um, I could just put some strings of lights. Just for fun, just some strings of lights. And using ochre because I've got some ochre there already. Actually, I'll just use ochre for my lights. If you wanted to use red or blue or incorporate any other color that you like. But there, it just got a lot more festive, that tree. Or as I said, if you didn't want it to be yellow lights, you, want it to, you wanted it to be red, I'm just adding red on the top of my yellow. So 
Some of them will look a little bit orangey. And I could bring that right around. And I'm going to, just because I painted that beak yellow or, or ochre, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paint that little heart ochre as well, just to match it up. So you see, if you get to painting cards for people for Christmas or for other occasions, there's there's no limit to the the things that you'll be able to do and the things that you'll be able to share with other people and you'll never have to buy a card again And one of the things that some people have said um, that concerns them with cards when you're working with watercolor paper, um, when you, you tear a paper, you've got that uneven edge. And some people think mm, maybe they don't like that. Um, there's really not, because it's a, a, an original art that you'd be giving away if or having for yourself, there's no problem having that uneven edge. But if it does bother you, it's not, you can use scissors or you can use a cutter and cut it perfectly straight. That's entirely up to you. Um, usually if I'm giving a card and it's got that uneven edge, then people know that it's an original. So they're quite happy with that. So we're just um, at 10 minutes from the hour. So that's what you can do in one hour. That's two cards done already. Gives you lots of ideas and opportunities um, how to put those lights on a tree just from just by running your brush along. So we just went across the front at the top and then stopped and then came from the other side over the top. So that's what gives you the break and the look or appearance that the lights have actually gone around the tree. So hopefully that helps you when you're doing Christmas cards or, or um, painting lights or bows or anything. You stop at one edge and then begin again at the opposite edge. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you so much for honoring me with your presence and sharing your time.